Hey guys, welcome back. It's Josh with the Financial Advisor Car Guy. This week I wanted to talk a little bit about movie cars. If you are a movie lover and you watch car movies, uh, you probably are gonna know every single one that I'm gonna talk about. But basically what I wanted to do is discuss the collectability, the desirability, and then something about the value of some of these cars um, in today's dollars. And so basically what I'm gonna do is start with my all-time favorite car. Uh, when this movie came out, I really wanted to have one. Um, it's always been my dream car anyway, but it's a 1967 GT500 Shelby. Um, what the movie is is Gone in 60 Seconds with Nicolas Cage, and in that movie he drives what he calls Eleanor, which is a modified 67 Fastback uh, GT500 Shelby car. Now, that car, even before that movie, was always my dream car. I've always loved the look of the Fastbacks. Um, as you guys know, I have a 68 convertible. I do have a fiberglass Fastback roof for it, which is a long story. We'll get into that another time. That's getting worked on, and ultimately my car will now become a Fastback when the roof is on. But it's still not a true Fastback car. It's still not a true Shelby car. It is a clone, and that's fine. Now, what the folks there at the movie studio did for that movie was they contacted Chip Foos, who probably every one of you's heard of, and he designed and modified Ford Mustangs into Eleanor. Uh, they made several for the movie. Authentic movie cars are all worth seven figures. There are several of them out there and they're all pr privately owned now. Um, but every so often one will come to market, it'll go to an auction, and it's going to demand top dollar. There are probably thousands, and I'm not exaggerating, thousands of clones of that Eleanor car. And it's a gunmetal gray with black racing stripes. It's got all these great bells and whistles to it, um, down to that go baby go NOS uh, switch right there on the console. Iconic car, everybody knows it, everybody's seen it, everybody has probably wanted one from time to time. And uh, they've just gotten so astronomically expensive, hard to get. Um, a bone stock, you know, run down, busted 1967 Fastback Mustang anymore can very rarely be found under twenty-five dollars or $30,000, even in non-running condition. So by the time you do all the modifications it takes, you know, by the time you get it painted and bodywork and interior and all that stuff, you're probably looking at a six figure car and that's assuming you are able to do some of the work yourself. Um, or even if you contracted it out with people you know and you're able to shop around and get good prices. But if you were to buy one of those cars turnkey, they're, they're not under $100,000 anymore. And so that's the first car I wanted to visit with you guys about because it's near and dear to my own heart and it's something that someday I would love to have in my garage. Um, other iconic movie cars or TV show cars, you know, I think of Dukes of Hazard, okay, the General Lee. And right up there with General Lee is gonna be the Fast and Furious Charger, uh, Dom's black Charger. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember the ages. I wanna say those were all 1970s cars. Um, maybe 69, maybe 71, something like that. But I want to say there were 1970 Dodge Chargers and super iconic. Both of those movies or shows have done exceptionally well. And, um, I would say the General Lee more than the, more than Dom's Charger has been cloned hundreds, if not thousands of times. Same exact thing. I mean, and that one's been a more longstanding classic clone because the show was around 30 years before. Um, gone in 60 seconds. So all that to say, you know, they, there have been a lot more years that people have been cloning those. And then Fast and the Furious came along and there's some se several iconic cars from those movies, but Dom's Charger has been modified over the years. You know, there's whatever, 10 Fast and Furious movies after this new one that's coming out. And he drives a Challenger in, or a Charger, I'm sorry, Charger in every single one. Um, and some are more iconic than others, but that's his car of choice. And while he does drive other cars, people love to clone Dom's Charger. Um, but anyway, all that to say, there's other movie cars from, from that Fast and Furious series that have been great cars to clone. Um, every so often, you'll see Paul Walker or you know Brian O'Connor 
uh, his green eclipse from the first Fast and Furious movie. Maybe before we move into that, Chargers. Chargers anymore, just like those Fastback Mustangs. They are six-figure cars. They're incredibly hard to find. If you can find one, generally they're all rusted and rotted out. Um, if you find an original one in halfway decent shape, running and driving, you're probably looking at 60 to 80 grand. Uh, once you've really built it correctly and fixed everything and you've got a nice, even just a nice driver is probably up there beyond 60 to 80 grand. Um, and then if it's a show car, it's a six figure car. They're just, they're, they're becoming more rare. You know, they're literally 50 plus years old now. So they're harder to find. Parts are readily available, but they're not new old stock stuff anymore. That stuff's mostly gone. Uh, so it's all aftermarket reproduction parts. And, you know, old stock stuff, once upon a time, you could find it. And you just can't anymore. So they're hard to come by. Now, if we move into that Fast and Furious Eclipse, those cars are not terribly hard to come by, but depending on the model you want, um, they can still be pretty expensive. I actually was just looking at one, a, a GSX, an Eclipse GSX, which is the all wheel drive version, turbocharged, popped up on Facebook Marketplace in my state. It's not um, super local, but I actually have a recurring search for this car. This is a car that I wanted 20 years ago, 22 years ago. I think I wanted it in the year 2000. Um, always been kind of a, a car that I, I wanted, um, mostly because of that movie. You know, I, I talked about Eleanor. I've always wanted an Eleanor. I wanted a 67 Fastback before that movie ever came out. And after seeing what Foose did with that particular Mustang, turning it into this Shelby, you know, my mindset shifted and I decided Eleanor, I think is what I want when it comes to a 67 Fastback. So now we go to the Eclipse and looking at Brian or Paul Walker, but Brian um, O'Connor's car, it's very iconic. It's got, you know, decals on the sides. It's lime green. It's got a big aluminum wing on the back. It's got a laptop in the passenger seat, right? It's got all the things that made that movie what it was, but it's iconic. If you saw one of those driving down the street, there's no question as to what it's from. People know that's the Fast and Furious car. Later in that first movie, Paul Walker then drives an orange Toyota Supra. Now those Toyota Supras are stupid expensive. They're very, very expensive with that 2JZ engine in it. And it, they're hard to come by, same story. They're just iconic cars, hard to come by, very expensive. The Eclipse that I was talking about that popped up on Facebook Marketplace, that GSX car is a 2000, no, I'm sorry, it's a 99. They, style, they changed the body style in 2000. So it's 95 to 99 is really the right body style. Um, this one was, a, I think it was a 99. It had like 102,000 miles on it, but it's an all wheel drive GSX and they want $15,000. So again, I have it as a recurring search on my Facebook marketplace. And what I did find was out of the area, uh, a 95 GSX with like 140,000 miles needs paint and body work and needs some interior done. Um, but the guy's asking only $4,000 and it runs and drives and he just had the transmission rebuilt. So all that to say, I think that's a pretty solid buy. I could in theory buy that car for $4,000 or maybe negotiate it down a little bit, clone it for a few thousand dollars into Paul's car. And all of a sudden now I've got a clone of a Fast and Furious car that's probably worth 20 grand. Um, especially if it is indeed that GSX and it's well-maintained. Now in the movie, they used a base model car. It was just the, the Eclipse RS, which is a non-turbocharged uh, front wheel drive, just commuter coupe car really is what it is. Looks sporty, but like zero performance. Um, realistically, you'd want the GSX because it is turbocharged. It is all wheel drive and it's actually pretty fast. So in a perfect world, you'd build a clone using a GSX, whereas in the movie, especially for stunt cars and things, they weren't gonna wreck these more expensive, more valuable cars. And they just used, you know, base model cars more or less. Um, and if you're gonna clone something like that, you don't necessarily care what the body looks like from a paint standpoint. And maybe you're gonna swap out the seats anyway, so you don't really care if the interior is a little roached out. That's the exact case with this, this Eclipse. Um, so, I mean, I 
probably could or should pursue it. That would give me a winter project and it would be a lot of fun. I've always wanted a movie car. But anyway, like I said, these Eclipse cars, they've been a dream of mine for 20 plus years. And um, in theory, I could go get one. <laughs> I don't know that I will. Don't hold me to that. I don't know that I'll get one, but it would be a lot of fun to, to do that. Um, moving into those Supras though, they are just way too much money. People want, you know, stupid money for those 80, 90, $100,000. Um, many of them are modified. If you can find one that's bone stock, never touched with the turbocharged engine, um, they're way more money, 100 grand, 120. Um, on Bring a Trailer, if you're familiar with their website, I wanna say the last Supra I saw on there was like a 97. Um, pretty low original miles, it was a turbo car. I think it went for like $144,000. So something crazy, like triple the new MSRP when that car came out. Um, it was a pretty expensive car when it was new. It was Toyota's pinnacle. I mean, it was it was the best car Toyota made. Um, and I wanna say that when they were new, they were something around $40,000, which was a lot of money back in the 90s. Uh, but here we are today, they're selling for three or four times that, and they now have 50 or 60 or 80,000 miles. Crazy, crazy. Um, other iconic movie cars, you know, you think of like Herbie, the love bug, right? Those are not expensive cars. You can go buy a Volkswagen for very little money. You can paint it cream. You can put racing stripes and a number on the side and on the hood, and you've got yourself a Herbie clone. And you know, those, those don't cost a lot of money. Those are kind of fun to tool around in. Everybody loves them. You know, you get people pointing and waving and thumbs up and all those things. And it's a very simple car. They're easy to work on. They're easy to build. They're cheap very low maintenance um, and parts are readily available. There's millions, literally millions of Volkswagen Beetles around the world. So parts are never gonna go out of, out of place. I mean, you can always find something for one of those. And they're so crazy easy to modify. Um, you can swap in a different VW motor if you wanted to, right? So there's a million things you could do there. And uh, that's a really fun and easy project. But I've never owned a Volkswagen. Um, not that I've ever, I've never really had the desire to. Um, I think if I did, it would be a Herbie. I think that that'd be a lot of fun. I think that those are, you know, again, those iconic movie cars are just so much fun. Um, you know, if, if you think back to, gosh, I guess it was the early or mid seventies, uh, the movie with Steve McQueen, Bullet came out. Um, Bullet, once again, was a 67 Mustang Fastback. Now it wasn't a Shelby, it was just a 390 big block uh, great car, and that's what Steve McQueen drove. It was kind of the hero car in that movie. Every so often you'll run across, um, yeah, you'll run across a, a Highland green colored fastback and people will have cloned it into uh, the bullet. And that's another iconic one. Um, the lines never really impressed me from a, you know, it's just a stock, it's just a stock fastback. So. You know, again, I've always kind of had my eye on that 67 Shelby because of the hood scoops and the vents and all the things that differentiate it from the regular Mustang. And whereas in the Bullet movie, it's just a big block Mustang. It, it, that's what it is. That's what it was supposed to be. Quite frankly, I've never been a fan of green cars. So I was never, you know, after the, uh, the Bullet the same way other people were. But uh, still a very cool car, still a very fun car and a very highly desirable car. Um, other than that, you know, thinking about other movies, think about like the Transformers movies, those are full of cars. Um, think of, gosh, well, like I said, the whole Fast and Furious lineup, um, another super iconic car from that series is gonna be the Nissan Skyline, the R34. Uh, Paul Walker drives two of them. He's got a blue one. He also has a silver one with some blue graphics and blue underglow and all that stuff. Um, those cars have gotten out of hand. Same thing from a price standpoint, those GTRs are six figure cars or close to it. Occasionally you can get into one for a little bit less, but you never know the problems with a car that's 20 plus years old. If you're gonna spend you know, $100,000, if it's not fully restored and like new, I'd be concerned with what you're getting into, but Again, that's another super iconic car. Um, one that I see every so often online are Jeeps that have been replicated into the Jurassic Park Jeeps. Um, those are kind of fun. Those are actually super fun. People who have Jeeps love them anyway. 
but you know if you see that Jurassic Park logo there on the side of the Jeep or you know it's painted in that beige that sandy beige color with some of the red accents and whatever super iconic you know I just think those are so so cool um, so that right there is kind of the list I, I don't off the top of my head can't think of anything else that super comes to mind um, I know the moment I hit stop and I finish this recording, I'm gonna, gonna have several, but uh, I would say that that's a great start. You know, and, and I guess the point of all this is you can have these movie car replicas that draw a ton of attention. And depending upon what it is that it is, um, you know, is it an R34 or a Supra or is it a, a Jeep or a, an Eclipse? Um, totally different scales of, of rarity, value, cost, um, when it comes to actually building the car to look like the movie car. Jeep Wranglers are a dime a dozen. I mean, you can find them for a couple thousand dollars. Maybe you find one that's already beige and then you go on eBay or Amazon and you buy the logos and the decals and the stickers and you could probably clone the um, Jurassic Park Jeep or even the Jurassic Park Explorer for not all that much money. The Explorer is gonna be the paint and you're probably never gonna find one with a glass roof but you can make it look the same otherwise. But the Wranglers specifically, you can do for not a ton of money. And, you know, I would say the same with the, uh, with the Eclipse in my circumstance. If I, if I were to go buy that car, you know, for $4,000, I could probably paint it myself. I could probably do all the work to it I needed to to make it look like the movie car for under 10 grand, including the cost of the car. And I'd be shocked if I couldn't sell it for almost double that. <clears throat> the last couple times I've seen movie clone cars from Fast and Furious Go, whether it's Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, whatever, usually they're 20 to 25 or more. So if I could build one for 10, um, pretty safe investment, pretty safe investment. And like I said, if, if you're building it on the GSX platform, you are already money ahead because you've got a better car. It's all wheel drive. You could drive it year round. It's also turbocharged, so it's gonna have some power as opposed to the standard RS or even the, the GST, um, which is not all wheel drive. So I like the Eclipse. I guess the moral of this story is I'm talking myself into buying one, <laughs> uh, but that's really all I got for you guys. If you have any particular movie car that you wanna learn more about, I'm happy to do more episodes on this stuff. I get a kick out of it. I think movie cars are fantastic. I'm actually shocked that it took me almost two years of having this channel to even bring this topic up. Um, cause I, I love movie cars. I I'm fascinated by them. I think they're super fun. You know, again, I, I think there's something iconic about being able to reference, you know, you see that car and you're like, Oh, Hey, I saw it in that movie. And I loved that movie. Now I have an instant attraction to that car. So I think it's fun. Um, my kids love it. Children everywhere love it. And quite frankly, I was a kid once and I loved cars and people who were nice to me and let me look at their cars and sit in their cars and would entertain me. Um, with their cars it is what it's all about. And so as an adult, if I'm driving my Mustang or if I'm driving my R8 and a little kid's waving at me, I would be a jerk to not at least wave back or stop and say hello. Or, you know, at car shows, I let people sit in my car all the time. I do. I'll open the driver door, the passenger door, they'll sit in it, take some pictures, whatever it is. Um, I mean, that's what it's all about. Car culture is such that, you know, you don't want to be arrogant or pompous, you know, that, that's, that's not what it's for. That's not, I don't know. I just think that's silly. And I, I mean, like I said, I, when I was a kid, I wouldn't have wanted someone to be a jerk to me. That would have ruined my perception of the car scene. And I would have probably grown up a little more cynical in that regard. I don't think I would have had the same passion for cars if people weren't encouraging of it when I was a little guy. And so anyway, that's kind of a sidebar for you, but um, movie cars are so much fun. Kids love them. And if you can share your love of vehicles with the next generation, you should do it. It's huge. I want to see, you know, I, that's kind of my passion, my dream. I want to be an old man wandering through a car show, seeing young families with young kids that are super into it. Because I think anymore, so many car manufacturers are going away from uh, all the beautiful character that these older cars have and they're becoming much more generic in a lot of ways. They're, they're all kind of the same. Uh, once upon a time, not only could you listen and hear an engine and know what car it was from, but if you saw a headlight or a taillight, you could name not only the year, but the make, the model, the, all the things, you know? 
and anymore, you can't do that. There's, there's so many manufacturers making so many different models with so many different trims and options that you just can't keep up with it any longer. And then at the end of the day, they're all similar. So <laughs> yeah, anyway. Share with me what you got. If you have a car in your life that has been a, a you've been a, a fan of it forever, um, you know, let me know. I, I would love to, to share that with you and I'd be curious to know what you've got. Um, you know, more so than that, I'm always looking for ideas for future episodes. So don't be shy, comment down below, share that with me. But most important, remember, may every investment you make be a good one. Till next time.